Isn't it beautiful? Bet you know a few people down there. But if we want to keep the Earth healthy, we've got some things we really need to work on. You've probably heard about this stuff, air pollution and greenhouse gases like CO2. Did you know they impact the ocean as well? Hey there, it's me, Eva, friend and advocate of the ocean, coming at you from the big blue. And today we're here to talk about coastal ocean acidification and what you can do to stop it. So grab your snorkel, let's dive in. Let's start by asking some of our expert scientists what ocean acidification is. Ocean acidification is caused by CO2 emissions being absorbed by the ocean, which changes the chemistry of the seawater. Since the Industrial Revolution, we've been pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels. And about 25 to 35 percent of that has been taken up by the oceans. The oceans act like a sponge for carbon dioxide. It's the largest natural reservoir of carbon on the planet Earth. Oh, hello, ocean. Hey, Industrial Revolution. Sorry, my newfangled factory is releasing a bunch of carbon into the air. <laughs> no problem. I got it. The ocean sucking up the CO2 that we put into the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels, by burning gas and coal and, you know, driving around and flying airplanes and all of this. And we're cruising at 30,000 feet. Oh, hey there, ocean. Oh, hey, airplane. Sorry, my plane's leaving a trail of CO2 behind us. I got it. It's what I do. Over and out. Carbon dioxide dissolving into the water, causing the pH to decrease and making it more difficult for some organisms to survive. And that is problematic to marine species, particularly shell building species. That acidity really messes with shell development. When water is acidifying or you have that drop in pH, it makes it harder for shelled organisms to build that shell. Shells are the armor of the underwater world. Ocean acidification is like a science experiment, but on a global level. When CO2 dissolves in water, like in seltzer water, it becomes more acidic. See? Seltzer water is acidic, so it turns blue litmus paper red. If you eat seafood, you should absolutely care about ocean acidification. I like seafood. I live in a coastal community. I like going whale watching and scuba diving, and ocean acidification has the potential to impact all of these things. And once it has an impact on one species, it can ripple through the food chain. Ocean acidification has a domino effect. It affects microscopic marine species like phytoplankton at the bottom, and then works its way all the way up the food chain and then impacts all of us. Unfortunately, what happens underwater doesn't stay underwater. It affects all of us, especially coastal communities. It is directly affecting people's lives. We know that there are whole industries and part of our coastal economies that are tied to the health of the marine environment. People who fish for finfish who spend early parts of their life on oyster reefs. If the oyster reefs go away, so will those fisheries. Coastal economy? How much money are we talking about? The ocean provides a lot of seafood for the U.S. and a lot of jobs. Economically, it's about 1.7 million jobs and over $250 billion. That's a lot of clams. Coastal communities depend on the ocean for their livelihoods. Fishing, tourism, it's all connected. If the ocean suffers, we suffer too. So what is coastal acidification? There's different types of acidification. The big one that a lot of us are focused on is ocean acidification. That is the ocean sucking up the CO2 that we put into the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels. There's also coastal acidification, and that's something that is more prevalent in some areas and maybe more visible in your backyard. There's a lot of different pollutants and runoffs that we put into waterways. Wastewater treatment plants, stormwater, agricultural runoff at a coastal zone. And there's a lot of problems associated with pollution runoff and some of them are changes in pH. Hey, ocean. 
Are you okay? You're looking a little green around the gills. What's going on? <laughs> I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm taking on way too much. My pH feels off. Frankly, I'm a little bitter about it. Now, there is a way we can remove carbon that we've already released into the atmosphere and the oceans, something called carbon capture. Scientists are working on technologies to remove carbon from the ocean, but before we get too excited, these technologies can only help with, not solve the problem. I think we've all figured out that no one single carbon removal strategy will be enough to remove all the carbon dioxide that is necessary in order to halt climate change. So we need many of these carbon removal strategies, and then we still need uh, humans to reduce the emissions of carbon dioxide emissions as well. There's, there's probably a good 10 to 15 startups in the U.S. that are based around some type of carbon removal in the ocean, as well as others that are doing direct air capture on land. Things that people can do to make a difference all relate back to things people can do to make a difference with climate change. Try biking instead of driving. Plant more trees. Encourage your parents to try eco-friendly landscaping using plants native to your region. If we change the amount of fertilizers that we use in our yards, we put less nutrients into our watersheds. And when we reduce those nutrients, we reduce the amount of excessive algae growth that can help lead to acidic conditions by the release of CO2 as those plants decay when they die. Today, we've learned we must reduce the amount of CO2 the ocean is taken in. We also learned about many of the factors causing coastal acidification, like nutrient runoff and CO2 from fossil fuels. But you've also heard many ways that you can help stop coastal acidification. Need some more ways? I'm so glad you asked. Trees and plants do two things really well, remove CO2 from the air and help keep water on land so it doesn't wash pollutants into streams, rivers, and the ocean. So, Get involved in tree planting and building rain gardens in your community. Actions in your neighborhood can help solve this problem. Another simple thing, carpool whenever you can. Less cars means less CO2 emissions. Or hey, start thinking about a career in environmental science or engineering. We need your beautiful brain power to invent new innovative solutions to help make the world a better, healthier, cleaner place for all of us. The ocean plays a crucial role in supporting life on Earth, providing habitat for billions of sea creatures, food and jobs for millions of people, and helping to reduce the impact we're having on the planet. We need to do all we can to protect it and reduce our impact. Together, let's protect, preserve, and ensure that our ocean and planet flourishes for generations to come. Remember, every action you take makes a difference. So until next time, stay salty, stay inspired, and let's keep those oceans thriving.